This Florida governor's race is going to be unbelievable. It's going to tell us a lot. You were just saying in the break, it's going to give you clues to 2020. But let me ask yeah. you to stay in your lanes right now. Yeah. So, Jonathan, <laughs> Andrew Gillum, yeah. backed by Bernie Sanders, backed by the money of Tom Steyer, uh, is the same message, though, and is that left leaning candidacy going to resonate with Florida voters in the general? Is he going to have to adjust? Well, any candidate who wants to win a general election adjusts some. Uh, the question is whether, and, and Trump's tweet today is an indication, they will uh, pour such a you know, bucket full of mud on top of him that it'll be hard for him to get out of it. He's a talented... Well, yeah, and how, much, how well known is he politician. statewide? He's not very well known statewide at all. So who's going to define who he talent. is? Well, that's, that's the issue. Who defines who he is? Not for Democrats, but for the swing independents who could not vote yesterday mm -hmm. because it's a closed primary in Florida. So what we don't know in Florida is which way the independents will go this time. In the past, they've tended to trend Republican. But there are quite a number of disaffected Republicans who are now describing themselves as independents, and they might be open to an argument from the Democrat and not want to go with the Trump guy, the Trump robot, DeSantis, because they don't like Trump. Let's talk about uh, DeSantis. He got a lot of yep. criticism and attention for that ad yep. where he's got his little son building a wall with his building blocks and he's reading him a book. Um, What's his strategy? Do you win a state as large and diverse as Florida just by being pro-Trump? You know what? This is going to be such a litmus t test for 2020. I cannot wait. I'm very excited about this race. But I'll tell you, here's what DeSantis has uh, versus Gillum. They've got to look because it's all about that base. They have got two types of bases going on. They've got the working man base, but it's divided between the Trump supporter working base and the uh, progressive movement that feels like, you know, they're the real working, you know, the working class. So you have two types of messages. Both centered around working class base you know the Republicans is, have got that economy and if I were DeSantis I would be pushing that economy and if I were Gillum I would be you know I guess you would have to to push health care and different things that per, that pertain to different retirees or something in the state it is going to be one of the biggest races that everybody every strategist is going to be and, looking at you know I think Steve talked about the energy but and and there were strong numbers on both sides but Jonathan uh, the Associated Press points out that, that Republicans cast about 1.6 million Florida ballots. Democrats were on track to fall below 1.5. Where's the blue wave? Right. Well, there was higher turnout on both sides, but that's a very important figure. So there's a lot of energy on the Republican side, which hasn't gotten a lot of comment. We've been talking a lot about this energized Democratic base. Certain Democrats think they have the midterms in the bag in the House. Uh, because of everything they've been hearing from pundits. This thing is going to be really, really competitive right to Election Day. The stakes are enormously high, not, not necessarily in the Senate race, but in these House races, because uh, if Donald Trump is emboldened by uh, Republicans holding control of the House of Representatives, Everything he's done so far will look like patty cake. No, I think that the, uh, the Democrats have energized because look at Gillum, look at Alexandria uh, Cortez. No, they have look, at the, look at these candidates that have come from nowhere, and it's all because of that uh, blue wave energy on, on your right. side. There's a lot of energy. So they are, I just think in a general, I think that is the wrong candidate to put, uh, to put up. I es think that is going to be a really hard. Especially because I think where Gillum could have some problems is he has come out for abolishing ICE and right. the best position for a Democrat is reform ICE, restructure ICE, but if you actually say abolish ICE, you lose some votes that way. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, another place where that's uh, very important, that's Arizona. Republican establishment, I think we said breathing a sigh of relief <laughs> to say the least, um, but if you thought the race was already tough, uh, just wait. Here's Martha McSally taking a shot at her Democratic opponent. Mm. I am as impressed as anyone that my opponent brags that she owns over 100 pair of shoes. I, on the other hand, have over 100 combat missions serving our country. Uh, no, it doesn't work for you? 
I don't I don't like that. I mean, that's just me. I like McSally. I think she is strong. I think she is. Uh, You're a Republican. Though. Yeah, I am. And I, and I really like her. I think that she would do a great job. Um, no matter what, though, if I look back and take my GOP strategist hat off, I'm a woman. I am really proud that we've got, for the first time, we're going to have, no matter what, we're going to have a woman in the seat. So it's a victory for women as well. I just hope they don't beat each other up personally, on a personal level, well, like with, I, with I the high know. heels. Is that ship Jonathan? Yeah. And, and you've got, we've only got 30 seconds. What's your take on this race? Yeah, well, it, you know, Cinema's ahead in, in a recent poll. Um, if she goes on to win, that would indicate that there is a blue wave and that the Senate could possibly... Go so is your take it has to be a blue wave for because her to remember, win, or is there something she can do to well, win? Well, uh, uh, there's a lot you can always do, but the, the, the thing to look at is Texas. You know, it's too close to call now. If Ted Cruz loses, uh, you know, and Beto O'Rourke wins there, and if Cinema wins in Arizona, that means the Senate is going Democratic. Then you could have a full Congress that's Democratic. So that's something that's quite possible. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.